Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, praise the Lord. Greetings once again. This is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. I'm glad you could join us once again this week. We're going to be getting into the Word of God in just a few minutes. want to catch up on a few things that's happening with SpeakFaith.tv. I know you you hear me talk about it and you think, oh, Dr. Bill, surely there can't be more good news about SpeakFaith.tv. But there is. There's a lot happening there. And uh, I've told you before that we actually have kind of two versions of SpeakFaith.tv. One is, you might say, the production version, and one is the beta version. The beta is where we work out the code and work out uh, the uh, basically the programming, uh, future programming that will be on the production channel. And so you can get both the production and the beta and I'd encourage you to do that to kind of see the direction we're heading. So if you'd like to get in on the beta version, uh, not as many people are connected to that. We have over 2,500 households connected to the production version that's in the uh, the Roku channel store, but the private version that's kind of a, a hidden version uh, that's out there, we, we just have a handful of folks connected to that. So I'd encourage you to check into that if you'd like to. You can go to your Roku account at Roku.com and if you go into your account there'll be an option there if you kind of go into your account and scroll down the page kind of on the left hand side there's a, uh, a thing about adding private channels. If you click on add a private channel it will come up with a little uh, screen there where you can enter a code and the code is SFTV Beta and I'll put that up here on the screen so you can see that SFTV Beta. If you go ahead and sign up with that code then you'll be able to get in on the beta channel. Now here's what's on the beta channel that I'm kind of excited about. Uh, well, you know we have had before uh, Mac Hammond and the Winner's Way TV broadcast available on the beta channel. We talked about that briefly. We're still talking to Mac Hammond Ministries about uh, you know getting approval to make that permanent and put it in the regular production channel. But we also have an edition of Word of Faith Radio. So we're kind of combining <laughs> Word of Faith Radio's broadcasting with SpeakFaith.tv's Roku channel. So uh, in that sense, it's available on the channel in the beta version. And uh, we have a test feed there. We also have the production live feed of Word of Faith Radio. So if you connect to that, you'll be able to get in on the test that we're running right now of adding that into SpeakFaith.tv. So I'm really pretty excited about that. It took a while to get that code developed and get that to work out. There was a lot of little snags along the way, but uh, we managed to get it done. Praise the Lord. All right, let's go into the Word of God. I've got my tablet here. Talked about last time that on my tablet I use a uh, some Bible software called Cadre Bible. C-A-D-R-E-B-I-B-L-E. B-I-B-L-E, that's the book for me. <laughs> Amen. Uh, so Cadre Bible, and uh, it's really good software. And you can have different versions of Bibles and so forth and be able to read it right off your tablet. It's really handy for that. Uh, we completed our study last time of what are you thinking, but that's going to be the foundation and the basis of where we're going to uh, enter into today with a little different study, a little different approach. And, uh, but I want you to remember what we learned from the teaching on what are you thinking because it's going to fit in well with what we're talking about here. Let's go to Philemon. Philemon is a small book in the New Testament and uh, Paul was writing here to uh, Philemon and it is a one chapter book. Like I said, it's very short, only has one chapter. So in chapter 1, verse 1, it says, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon and the dearly beloved and fellow, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer, and to our beloved Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. 
They had a house church. You gotta remember at this time, there was a lot of persecution of Christians and they weren't as able to have a public meeting uh, place or facility like a church building. So very often they met underground or they met in people's homes. And that was the case in, in this uh, particular case where they were meeting in their house he says, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and faith. Now notice what he heard about Philemon. His love and his faith. Now those are two things that are noticeable to other people your love and your faith. And we know that the Word of God says faith worketh by love. So love is a key to the operation of faith. So here Philemon is being commended. He says, I've heard of your love, I've heard of your faith, which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all the saints. And here's the verse that I want to look at a little bit today. That the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Now notice that. The communication of your faith. Now the word communication in the King James is a little bit blind to us. Sometimes we don't see uh, exactly what he's talking about when he's talking about communication. Communication we think of as just words or maybe text typed on a screen or printed on a piece of paper and we communicate with one another. But actually, communication in this sense is talking about lifestyle and behavior. It's really talking about your lifestyle uh, as a believer. Now I'm going to go to um, the Strong's Concordance. I want to look up a couple of of things here and uh, very often the King James with Strong's Concordance is the best way to do that. Um, there we go. I was having a bit of a, a time finding it there. <laughs> All right, the word communication here is koinoia. <laughs> it means partnership, participation, and uh, is also translated, this is the same word, it's also translated church, believe it or not. But it's basically a fellowshipping together, a joining together. The communication of thy faith may become effectual. Communication of your faith may become effectual. The word effectual, let's look that up. Uh, Energese, it means effective and powerful, operative. And uh, matter of fact, that word was in a recent study that we did um, when we were talking about, you know, how you're thinking. What are you thinking? So it may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. The communication of your faith. And this word uh, faith here is, of course, the word pistis, which is the word that's translated for faith. So the communication the koinonia, the partnership, the participation, the benefaction of your faith is what I really want to focus on a bit here, and particularly the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. See, we're getting back to this thought of what are you thinking? What are you meditating on? What is your basis for life, your basis for operating here in this world and in this life. Uh, everybody has, you know, a lot of people talk about it as a, as a life philosophy. Everybody has a philosophy. Some people say, uh, oh, he's just so positive. He's always talking about positive things. Some people say, oh, he's just so negative. You know what I'm saying? He, where do they come from? <laughs> what's, their, what's their motivation for doing things? And uh, that will determine how you view things. It determines how you live, how you see things. And that's, like I said, part of what we just talked about, about what are you thinking. That 
basically forms your opinion of how things are perceived around you. You know, we talked about the fact that some people see a glass that's half full, <laughs> others see it as a glass half empty. And their perspective is different even though they're both seeing the same glass with the same amount of water. If the water is halfway in the glass, then you either perceive it as half full or as half empty. But it's a matter of your perception. It's part of how you look at things, how you perceive the world. Now what we ought to be striving to do, believing to do, is to perceive the world as the Lord perceives the world. Remember we have the mind of Christ. We talked about this in our study previous, that we have the mind of Christ. Well, if we have his mind, we ought to have his perceptions. We ought to have his perspective. We ought to perceive things in light of how does God perceive this? How does he think about this? See, a lot of Christians perceive things based on, well, that's the way my dad raised me. Or uh, that's how I was taught growing up. Or you know, any number of things that forms their worldview. And maybe that's the best way to put it, is your worldview. Now, we ought to have a Christian worldview. We ought to have a worldview based, again, on the Scripture, on the Word of God. Seeing through, really, the eyes of the Lord, using His mind, using His perceptions, using His basis of judging things. And when I say judging, I'm not talking about judging in a harsh way, judging as in determining, you know, are they right or wrong in this. No, I'm talking about how you perceive. How do you, how do you communicate your faith? How do you operate? You know, uh, in, in the computer world, and you know I work with computers, of course, in my secular job. In the computer world, we have an operating system. And that operating system is programmed, or is programming, that computer to respond in certain ways. If you put certain information in, certain information will come out. If you use a certain command, then something's going to happen that's predetermined based on that operating system. Well, Christians really should be the same way. We ought to be operating programmed, you might say, based on our operating system, which comes from the code <laughs> that's in the Word of God. I'm carrying this maybe to an extreme example, but it's something I think that will make sense to you if you think about it. The Bible is our book of instructions. Computers have instructions that they follow. We have instructions we should be following. You know, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So if you love me, run my code. <laughs> Amen. Those of you that are computer folks, you'll, you'll, you'll get this. <laughs> but I think most of you have dealt with it enough that you kind of understand where I'm coming from. Run God's code of instructions. Run His operating system, which is based on the Word of God. View things the way He views things. If you'll do that... It'll make a tremendous difference in your attitudes, in your life, in your perceptions, in how you perceive things. You know, there's a lot of people that perceive things a certain way and they'll get all down, they'll get all depressed. Oh, woe is me, how am I going to put up with all this? And somebody else will have the same circumstances and they'll say, well, praise God, I'm going to overcome this because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And my God will not leave me in this situation, hopeless and helpless, but I know there is a way out. No temptation is coming to me but such as is common to man. But God will, with that temptation, provide a means of escape. So all i got to do is find that means of escape, and then I'll be fine. What's the difference? One is thinking based on the Word of God. One is thinking based on the circumstances. The person thinking based on circumstance will always tend toward the negative because the world is going in a negative direction. Do you see that? Satan, according to the Word of God, is the little G-O-D, God, of this world system, this Babylonian system that is in place here on this earth. 
he is the little G-O-D. Now, that's not the big G. <laughs> you know, God as in God. No, he's not God. But he is the little G-O-D, one who is an authority of the world system. He's got it running in a negative direction. And just like, I don't know if you ever worked with a canoe, but canoes are very, 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 very light. They float right on the surface of the water. As a matter of fact, it's almost almost strange how light they are and how high they float in the water. And once you get in them, they, they sink down in the water just a little bit. They displace water differently because of the weight when you get into them. But essentially, they float very easily on the water. Well, what happens if a canoe is left, particularly if it's empty, sitting right on the surface of the water? It will flow with the current as easily. I mean, the least tiniest bit of wind will blow that canoe downstream quicker than you can grab it and it'll get away from you. I've had them get away from me and I've had to go after them. So I've seen how that can happen. Now why does that happen? Because the, the stream, the river, the lake, whatever it is you're on, is flowing in a particular direction. Well this world system flows in a particular direction and that is Satan's direction because he's the little G-O-D, God of the world system, and it flows in his direction at his behest and if you just let go and quote go with the flow, you know you've heard that term before, go with the flow, if you just go with the flow you're going to end up in a negative direction. You're going to end up down. You're going to end up depressed. You're going to end up thinking, oh, I'll never make it. I'll never get this bill paid. I'll never get over this particular sickness or disease or whatever it is that he's trying to put on you. And so you'll think in those terms. And that is will cause your faith to be ineffectual. See, that's what this, this verse of Scripture is talking about here when it says that he prays that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every thing, good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. We want our faith to be effective. Effective lives of faith. And I think every Christian wants that. Every believer wants to have an effective life of faith. But how do you do that? If the world's running in a negative direction, I mean, it almost seems insurmountable sometimes. Well, I'll tell you what you do in a canoe. You put the boat, in, you put the oar in the water, and you row. <laughs> in other words, you have to expend some energy. You have to row that canoe or paddle that canoe, you know, and that does expend energy. It re requires effort. But if you do that, you can go against the flow of the current. Now, nobody said it was easy. Nobody said it would be like ripe apples falling off a tree. You know, Brother, Brother Kenneth Hagin always used to say that. Faith, the life of faith is not like ripe apples falling on, on you, like, you know, just like they're falling off the tree. That's, that's not how it works. It's not always easy, but it is always a successful life. It is always a blessed life. If you do what the Bible says to do, if your faith will become effectual. Now, how does it, how, according to the scripture, how does it do that? By the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you. Well, what are you putting in you? You ought to be putting the Word of God in you. You ought to be fellowshipping with other believers. You ought to be doing things that are of the Spirit, not of the world. The world system, like I said, is like that stream. It'll take you down the stream in the wrong direction. But if you're going to paddle against the current, then you're going to have to expend some effort to get into the Word of God, meditate in the Word of God, speak the Word of God, pray in the Holy Ghost, pray effectually, get in fellowship with believers of like precious faith. And you know, if you're fellowshipping in a church where they don't believe squat, you're just wasting your time <laughs> because you are surrounding yourself with doubt and unbelief. Yeah, you know, I'm reminded of the story of Kenneth Copeland told about how he went to a church to preach one time and the, the song leader got up and they started singing this song. And this song, oh my goodness, it was just terrible. And I'm not talking about the quality of the music so much, but what they were singing, what they were saying, what they were thinking about, meditating on. 
and Brother Copeland got up and said, Hold on! That song is embalmed with unbelief. <laughs> now, the song leader probably didn't appreciate that. Maybe even the, the church members didn't quite appreciate that, but he had a point. If the song's embalmed with unbelief, then you're just wallowing in unbelief. That's not doing you any good at all. You need... <laughs> I know this is true of me. I love to hear songs that lift you up, that say good things about you and about the Word of God. I am the righteousness of God in Christ, a brand new creation in Him. I'm a partaker of His divine nature. On me, He will not impute sin. Amen. Those lyrics remind you of the Scripture. Those lyrics of that song, now that's a, that's a good David Engel song. David Engel's got a lot of good songs. New creation, keep the switch faith turned on, seed of Abraham. All of these songs are based on the Word of God, based on the Scripture. And as you hear those songs, and as they surround you with reminders of what the Word of God says about you. You remember who you are in Christ Jesus. You remember who you are in Him. The in Him realities. Who we are in Christ. And as we dwell on that and meditate on that and make that an effective part of our life, we, our perception is changed based on that. That's why you need to surround yourself with songs that are filling you full of faith and not full of doubt and unbelief. I am amazed at what passes for so-called Christian music these days. Oh my goodness. You know, back in the old days, <laughs> and I go back a ways here, back in the old days they had songs like, I'm climbing up the rough side of the mountain. <laughs> you know, woe is me, gloom and despair. I mean, it was just terrible. But now they've put an electric guitar in it and they're singing the same old woe is me stuff and calling it Christian music. And I get, I get kind of annoyed by it. Now, I like contemporary Christian music, don't get me wrong. I love to listen to a good contemporary song, but it's got to be scriptural. It's got to be based on the Word of God. Don't go singing about how woe is me, we're not going to make it. That's not going to help you. And you may say, well, I don't sing it, I listen to it. That, <laughs> take heed what you hear. And if you can't take heed what you hear, take heed how you hear. Remember we talked about that? I think it was last week we talked about that. Take heed what you hear, take heed how you hear. See, I can't always control every single word that I hear, but I can take heed how I hear it. I can compare it to the Word of God and understand where it's coming from and, and how it might affect me and, and try to you know cut it off its path, so to speak. But I can also take heed what I hear and make a decision that what I'm listening to is not doubt and unbelief but it's the Word of God put to music. Now I'm talking specifically about music here because that's one area that I, I particularly see Christians, I don't know, getting sucked off into just mess. Stuff you don't, if you thought about what you're singing along with. Now I don't know if you like me. I get in the car and I'm driving along and I sing along with the cassette, well it's not cassette anymore, but the CD or the MP3s or whatever. Back in the day it was cassettes and before that it was eight tracks. <laughs> but I would listen to stuff and if you're like me, you sing along with it. Well, I want you to think about that. You're hearing. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Well guess what? Fear cometh by hearing the Word of the devil too. And then you're saying what you're hearing because you're singing along with it. It is a form of meditation. And that's a form of meditation you do not want to partake in if it is doubt and unbelief because you're going to embalm yourself, as Brother Copeland says, with doubt and unbelief. No, you need to hear the good Word of God. You need to be singing the good Word of God. You need to meditate on it. Hallelujah. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am healed. I am whole from the top of my head to the soul to the tip of my toes. Amen. See, those are the kinds of things. Keep the switch of faith turned on. Oh, my goodness. All kinds of good songs. Brother Copeland sang a, a Janie Grind song. Her song was Covenant Woman. He changed it to Covenant Man and sang it. 
but I'm a covenant man, praise the Lord. Realize that what you're singing, what you're hearing, what you're saying is building into you an inner image, a perception, a mindset, a worldview. And that I, I'm doubly convinced that that is, is what we are being attacked more than ever in is Satan's trying to get a hold of Christians' worldview. He's trying to distort our worldview. He's trying to manipulate how we think and what we think about. And that's why this scripture is such a key to us. That the communication of your faith may become effective, let's put it that way, effectual in the King James, but effective, by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love, verse 7, because the bowels of the saints are uh, refreshed by thee, brother. Wherefore, though I might be much bold in Christ to enjoin thee that which is convenient, yet for love's sake I rather beseech thee, being such a one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ, I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds, which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but is now profitable to thee and to me, whom I have sent again. Thou therefore receive him, that is, mine own bowels, whom I would have retained with me, that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel. But without thy mind would I do nothing, that, by, uh, that thy benefit should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly." Uh, and he goes on, I was going to read the whole chapter here, but he, get, he gets into some basically some personal uh, references here of folks that he's ministered with and ministering with. But I want, us to, I want us to stay on that track of the fact that our faith is made effectual by the communication, the perception, the fellowshipping together with those of like precious faith. Because I believe, you know, the scripture says very plainly to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together and so much more as we see the day approaching. In these last of the last days, this is not the time to become a Lone Ranger Christian. You see what I'm saying? Uh, we're out of time. I'm going to have to stop right here. But I tell you what, I want you to write me here at Word of Faith Ministries. Our address is Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 5213-5213, High Point, North Carolina. The zip code 27262. You can also write me in my email address, Dr. Bill, D R B I L L, at WOFM.org. Write me. I want to hear from you. I want to hear how the netcast is ministering to you. And remember what we were talking about about speakfaith.tv, about Word of Faith Radio, all the opportunities you have to surround yourself with the Word of God and to receive from the Word of God on a regular basis. It will be a blessing to you. Join us again next time. Remember until then to fulfill the Word of God. The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.